Okay, folks, thanks very much indeed for uh, turning up. Sorry about the weather. Um, we, we, we're here to announce that we're moving a private member's motion in the Dáil this evening uh, to compel the government to implement a Labour Court recommendation, which is now 10 years old, uh, to give pensions, to provide for pensions for community employment supervisors. Uh, you know, a brief perusal of the history of this since the Labour Court recommendation back in 2007 and 2008 is extremely interesting. I mean, people have been have been put off, deferred, uh, bluffed continuously for the past 10 years, and it's now time to bring it to a conclusion because the the the, the patience of the CE supervisors has run out after 10 years, and. Uh, they are threatening industrial action and as you know everybody is aware of the value of community employment schemes for the country and for the individuals involved and uh, these community employment schemes cannot operate without the supervisors so that would be that, that would be that, that, that would be uh, a, a tragedy uh, if industrial action was to proceed but you know after 10 years I suppose you can't blame people so you know everything has been done there's been a high level forum set up etc all the negotiations all the discussions have taken place all the costings have been done so there's nothing left now to, to do but implement the Labour Court recommendation. You will recall uh, at the time of the Garda dispute, uh, the government said that they were implementing a Labour Court recommendation to increase Garda pay and that it was incumbent on any sitting government uh, to implement the recommendations of the Labour Court, which is after all an organ of the state. So if that's the situation as regards Garda pay, surely it's the situation as regards CE pensions. You will also be aware of the fact that uh, we, we managed to start out a glitch in the CE schemes there last week whereby people who were uh, uh, taken on under uh, Torres Nua, under the uh, job, Jobspat scheme, they couldn't participate in CE schemes. I produced a bill on the matter and I don't have to move it now, thankfully, because the government are proceeding as I recommended in my bill. So if anybody has any questions on that or anything else, we'll be delighted. And by the way, by the way um, I want to say that we, 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 we've been pushing very hard on the CE super supervisors issue, uh, in, in particularly in relation to pensions for CE supervisors, no one more so than my good colleague from Waterford here, Deputy Mary Butler, who has been very vocal and very active on this subject. And maybe you'd like Thank to you. say something. Uh, uh, thanks, Willie. If I would just like to say, um, community enterprise supervisors and assisted supervisors, they're an intrinsic part of our community all over the country. And you know, when you stop and think about all the work these people do, they have been exceptional in encouraging people back to work. And I was talking to one CE supervisor last week who has a 100% record in encouraging people back to the workplace. You know, and you think of these supervisors, you think of these schemes, and all you think about, maybe they cut the grass in the local soccer or GA field, or they might cut the grass in the, in the, in the local cemetery. However, they do so much more. They, they work with the youth, they work with Meals on Wheels, they work with the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland, they work with the, with the Wheelchair Association. They do a fundamental, um, they, they do a, they have, they have fundamental role in all our communities. And the issue I have going forward here is something is not done. If something is not done to help these 1,250 supervisors, that they are going to, um, they're already after balloting for industrial action. And if they go on strike, there's going to be a huge amount of people left, left disenfranchised. And it wasn't that the grass will be grown in the fields, or in the hurling field or the soccer field. It will be the amount of people who depend on them for meals on wheels, who depend on them for home helpers, for community involvement. So any questions, we'll take them. Um, William, I suppose the first thing the government is going to say is that if this was a Labour Court recommendation in 2008, your party was in government at the time, so why not then and why now? Well, well, of course, you know, the, 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 rec the, the recommendation, first of all, there was a, it was preceded by a recommendation a few months previously that uh, home helps, that concerned home helps, and, and the, the Labour Court recommended that they should, pension provision should be made for those also. Now, the subsequent recommendation for community employment supervisors was in July, I think. Yeah, July. So, a couple of months later, anyway. So, uh, the two were considered together and the unions agreed, at the request of the government, that they would postpone the community employment issue until the other issue was sorted out. And it took about 12 to 15 months to sort that out. But the understanding was that once the home health issue was sorted out, that they would immediately move on to community employment supervisors. The government had changed at that stage, so I can't answer what happened after that.
Well, I, I, I'm not very familiar with the, with the actual, with actually what happened, and I didn't see the, I, I understand that the, 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 the clip was shown around the country, I didn't see it, but I suppose, look, you know, if somebody goes on to do an interview about a particular subject, and somebody starts asking them about all sorts of other different things, uh, you know, that can lead to a certain frustration, and sometimes people uh, decide to walk out and terminate the interview. I mean, it's, it's a matter for each individual. It's uh, something I'd be slow to do myself. But I mean, it has been done. It has been done on a number of occasions by people of various, uh, various political persuasions. How do you think uh, Sean Hanley has been treated by his colleagues in the Independent Alliance? And will you be reporting Mr. Hanley who does decide to leave the Alliance? Will we be supporting him? Courting. 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 Oh, courting. Sorry. <laughs> 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 well, I do nothing about courting, but. Uh, <laughs> Look, I, 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 again, I, I don't know the details of this. I mean, I mean, the whole thing was peculiar from the start. I mean, obviously, the, 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 there was an extra junior minister which the, the coalition didn't have room for. So they decided that they shared it between two people and decided who would go first based on the toss of a coin. That's unprecedented in the history of the state. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kenny, it was decided, I think, he got the first 12 months and then Mr. Morton was to get the next 12 months. And... I think they probably anticipated that the, 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 the longest it all would last would be about two years. Uh, we've now gone into our third year, so they're fighting amongst themselves about who should get the job. So, you know, I'll be, I, I, my, my inclination, I must say, is to stand back and let them sort it out between themselves. Well, that's a matter for, the, for both, in the first instance, for the Independent Alliance, and secondly, a matter for the Fischuk. Well, no, I mean, well, no, I mean, the, the, the point about it is that if you, the confidence supply agreement just dealt with general principles of policy. It didn't deal with the personnel or who was to be appointed to what position. So really, we don't have any hand act or part in the matter. I mean, you know, you, 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 the confidence supplies you agree to continue to facilitate the government, whom the government, the Taoiseach and the leaders of the various parties making up the government Applying to positions is entirely a matter for themselves. We don't have any input into that. Do you think that those who have taken the NES posters in Limerick should be pursued by the authorities? Do you think that charges should be pressed? And also, while there's no posters by King Paul on the lapels, how active have both of you been in the campaign? Well, you know, look, I mean, I've had experience in the past of my own posters being taken down. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's very frustrating, very annoying, because as you know, posters are pretty expensive. and. Uh, you know, I mean, people are entitled to the posters, that's the system we have. And, you know, anybody who takes down posters, whether for the yes side or the no side, should be pursued. I think they should be pursued. And I think that everybody who will be a, a, a candidate for the, for the next doll election will be delighted if they are pursued, because it might deter the people who take down our posters, which is, 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 is activity, an activity which I condemn <coughs> unreservedly. Uh, as, a gas, as a gas campaigning, well, I did say that uh, I wouldn't be campaigning one way or the other. And uh, I think people appreciate that because I was just remarking there a few minutes ago there's quite a number of um, doors down in Limerick where there's a sign up, no referendum canvassing. I think people simply want to make up their own minds. I think they, they, they would prefer, m most of my constituents I know would prefer politicians stood back from the matter and let people make up their own minds because there's plenty of information available. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd also like to say I think people, you know, we've called so many times for respectful debate and whether you're on the yes side or the no side, um, you know, and my position has been well articulated by now, but I have, I have to say the tearing down of posters, whether they're yes or no, is, is obviously uh, not the right way to, to deal with this issue. You know, people are entitled to put up their posters. Um, you asked a question, um, I personally will be canvassing for a no vote. I believe the onboard child should be... Um, should, should um, continue to have the support of, of the Constitution, should be protected within the Constitution, and I will be canvassing door to door, and I will also be speaking at public meetings, and I will be articulating um, a, a, a no vote. Um, I think we possibly should, and I think we possibly may. But at the same time, what I would like to say is we're a very broad church within Fianna Fáil, and we respect each other's um, positions on this. 
And as you would know, like I came out quite strongly from the very start, articulating a no vote, and I will continue to do so. But I have to say, the respect I've been shown by the other members in the parliamentary party who are articulating a yes vote, um, all our positions are respected with, within the party, and that's the way it's going to continue. I, I, I am um, sorry, sorry about that. Look, I, the thing about it is, <coughs> look, I've only arrived up now, just now, and I was speaking to my, my other colleagues during the week. Uh, Mary Brenton Howland said that you've seen a number of illegal posters in Wexford uh, that don't say who is actually paying for them. Um, have you seen that in other parts of South East in your own constituency? No, I haven't, but I did notice there was, I, when I, I was driving to Don Garvin yesterday and I noticed there was a huge um, a no poster which was after being um, torn down and, you know, they cost a lot of money to put up and I just think it's very, very important. You know, actually what surprised me about the yes posters um, calling for a yes vote, um, I didn't notice the word abortion on any one of those posters, you know, which, which kind of struck me as strange because this is a fundamental issue, is that we're asking people to vote on the 25th of May whether they want to... Um, you know, um, t take out the Eighth Amendment from the Constitution, remove Article 40.33 and replace it with that the government may legislate for the provision of, of uh, termination of pregnancy going forward. So it actually surprised me, and lots of people have commented on that to me, the fact that you're asking people to vote yes, but yes to what? The, the word abortion isn't mentioned, and it's a fundamental issue. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So for the past week, that um, officials in Fall Tower have started discussing the wind farm in County Clare half an hour before the Rio Grande Corps got in touch on behalf of Donald Trump about the removal of a wind farm there, a planning commission on a wind farm at least. Yeah. Fish has not clarified whether that activity started because he made a phone call or because he got in touch before we sent the email. Should he clarify if he did get in touch with Father Ireland in other ways other than that James email you mentioned him? I think he should, month? yeah, I think he should. I think it's incumbent on him to clarify that situation because uh, you know, it has certainly caused a lot of uh, friction uh, on the ground down there. And I think it's inappropriate for any minister to be, you know, using their position to contact agencies under the aegis of their department to influence the outcome of the planning decision one way or the other, regardless of who is the applicant. Okay,